All right, we gotta talk about a speculative small cap biotech that really seems to have taken off in the last month. Novio Pharmaceuticals, I-N-O for all you home gamers, right next to my hometown. Last night we talked a lot about the cancer immunotherapy plays that presented at, at the big American Society of Clinical Oncology conference over the weekend. Well, Novio uses DNA-based vaccine therapies that help your immune system recognize them, then destroy both cancer cells and infectious diseases. One of the problems with cancer is that it's a mutation of your cells. So your immune system often has trouble recognizing it as something hostile. So Inovio creates an artificial fragment of DNA that's then used to produce a whole bunch of targeted antigens that let your immune system recognize cancer or some other disease as the enemy. Then the company delivers platform, a delivery platform essentially turbocharges your immune response. Inovio stock roared up nearly 11% today, and that's right because it had news. News that it just started a phase three clinical trial to study its lead drug, a DNA-based immunotherapy for cervical dysplasia. That's a disease associated with HPV that can ultimately lead to cancer if you don't catch it in time. About a million and a half people have this disease here in the U.S., so this could be a very big deal. But it's also the earlier stage pipeline we've got to talk about. It's very exciting. Uh, therapies for head and neck cancer as well as cervical cancer in phase two and a bunch of others in phase one. Now, I know that's early, but we got to ask, can the stock keep climbing? Let's take a closer look at Dr. Joseph Kim. He's the president and CEO of Inovio Pharmaceuticals to find out more about his company and its prospects. Dr. Kim, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Good Have to be here, Jim. Thank you. Now, you've you. got some big news today, and we said that it is a big market, but it's still, uh, you know, we don't know how all the things are going to go work, work out, but the FDA has really given you the high sign to get working here, right? Absolutely. So, we're starting our phase three trial for cervical dysplasia for our lead product, VGX3100. It's going to be poised to be the first non-surgical treatment for this disease and first uh, treatment to clear the virus that caused the disease in the first place. So it's a great news for Inovio, great news for our shareholders, but also I think it's a, a wonderful news for the patients who really need this. How long have you been developing this? We've been doing this for the last several years. Right. Now, and it seemed like the FDA was delaying it and then just said it's fine. What changed? Certain uh, parameters of the test? What were they looking for? Well, we, we developed a new commercial device to deliver this product. Okay. It's like our Tesla version for a delivery system. Okay, but it's, but now, it's it, new. Right, it's not a large trial, right? It's just, there's not a lot of people involved. About 400 people. And that's enough for, to be able to validate. Absolutely. Wow, Absolutely. okay. Now, last time we spoke to you, you had uh, uh, something else that you were working on, that AstraZeneca, which is a company we think they have a tremendous anti-cancer franchise, mm -hmm. has partnered with you. How, how is that going? That's going like gangbusters. Really? So we're me. starting our first combo trial uh, actually this month. Uh, it's combining their checkpoint inhibitor molecule in FIMSI right. that was just recently approved right. for several indications with our cancer-fighting uh, immunotherapy. So uh, it's going to start in uh, uh, metastatic uh, head and neck cancer patients. Really? spread to cervical and other HPV-caused cancers. Okay, now you're not a large company. Uh, how can you, the, the first drug we mentioned is actually owned by you, right? Yes. You, how do you have enough money to be able to develop it when we know that uh, Regeneron, for instance, one of your partners, has said that sometimes it can take billions of dollars to get to where you can go to the market? Well, we're very focused and we're very good at what we do. But also, it's our technology platform. As you said, it's a very innovative way of jump charging a patient's own right. immune system. And we can do this very uh, uh, rapidly and, and effectively. So. You know, last time I was here a couple of years ago, we had about 150 people. Right. Now we're uh, doubled in size and we're able to execute on these programs. Not just our first phase three, but we have four phase two starting, three of those with big pharma partners like Metamune, Regeneron. Most recently, on the first day of ASCO, we announced a partnership or collaboration with Genentech for treating bladder cancer in PD-1 refractory patients. You're going after some really hard cancers. I mean, not, there have not been that much success, and yet you're confident. Yes, and, and the confidence isn't out of ignorance. It's really based on our data. Okay. We have about 1,000 patients worth of strong and potent immune responses already recorded across our early trials, 1,500 patients worth of safety data. So while we're still growing, right. this is a wonderful platform that's been validated with a lot of these data. Well, then give me the, uh, the timeline, for instance. Well, you know, we, a lot of people say phase three, that means it could be like this, you know, like that. But that's not true. But what is the timeline for this? For one? our phase three, we're projecting, I mean, it's an early projection, data by 2020, filing by 2021. 
Next five years, we love to have uh, uh, three or more products on the market, including our immuno-oncology products as well as vaccines. Now, with, if you get really spectacular results, will it take that long? Won't the government say, you know what, these compassionate use, we've got to give this to these people? Well, there are many uh, uh, potential for those. Right. And we're going to use all the avenues that's available to us. And our interactions with the FDA have been extremely positive and, and, and affirmative. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, talk to me about the Regeneron partnership, because we've had Lynch Life on. So he was our first guest, actually. He's and, great. I, and he would never, ever partner with anyone he didn't think was going to have something that's really special. So talk to us about that. Well, it's a great partnership. Uh, we're taking Regeneron's uh, checkpoint PD-1 inhibitor, uh, Regen-2810. Very, very important drug. Very important drug, and combining it with our INO-5401, really one of my favorite cancer therapies that we're developing in Novio, Combining that, and we're going for, we're swinging for the fences. I know but you're you a baseball know, but fan. Yes, I am. Well, if the Phillies were better, I'd be more baseball. But I do want to make this point. This is where, You've been at this for a long time, and it's, you're playing the long game. I know it sounds like everything, but you admit it's just a, it's a long game before you get to the fruition for everything big here. It, normally, yes, but in immuno-oncology and cancer, there are breakthrough pathways, fast tracking. It really depends on the data. I'm convinced, based on the data we have thus far, I know 541 plus uh, PD-1 inhibitor is going to bring about very important uh, clinical data. Well, we got to look. I know for the people, I don't want to give false hopes to people, but that is very, very exciting. Thank got you. an exciting company. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Kim, president and CEO of Inovio Pharmaceuticals from Plymouth Meeting, Philadelphia, next door where I'm from. Mad Money's back after the break. Great. Thank you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.